Um, welcome! It is Monday, it is January 9th, and I am just blessed to be able to see all of you again. I know some of you might not be feeling it, but we're here, we're together. Make sure your electronic devices are put away and that you have your, um, that's it, there you go. Get your notebooks out, please. Um, it's fabulous. While you get your notebooks out, I'll go ahead and read the question to you. It says, in the area where two plates meet, so two plates are meeting, there is a folded mountain range. What type of boundary do you think this is, and what is the movement at that area where they meet? So this is gonna be a great day for review, what we're doing today. While you're getting it out, your notes out and writing that down, I'll tell you about my uh, last weekend of break. We went to visit um, my husband's aunt, who's very old, and she's living in an assisted living area. And it was sad, y'all, because we were like getting her ready to move to Minnesota to be closer to her daughter and go into a nursing home. Alex, please pull your phone. Um, and it was like all of this stuff was in her house, and it was just like at the very end of the day, it's just stuff. You know, and she was like having a hard time parting with her stuff. You know, like I was showing her a blouse and being like, do you want to keep this? Does this go in the keep pile, the donate pile, or like, you know, the junk uh, pile? It was just sad, like boxes and boxes of just stuff. And she was crying, and, but it was nice to be with family and it was good. But I can't believe how much I missed you all. Um, and I'm excited to be back um, with you and teaching. So that's good. For me. Did anybody travel over break? Did you? You said you went to New York. What part of New York? Like New York State, New York City? State. New York State. What part of New York State? Syracuse, Albany. Albany. You went to all of it. You can't possibly go to all of it. You just don't remember the town you're in? Maybe. Maybe? Well, that's cool. I grew up in Vermont right next to New York, so right across the lake uh, from New York. And you're not listening to me anymore, and that's cool, but anyway. We used to take the ferry from Vermont to New York. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. Fairfield, Fairfield, Iowa. Fairfield, Iowa. That's good. Yeah. Honor Band. Honor Band? A fire in... Fire? That's crazy. Oh, Fairfield. Oh, okay. That's very funny. Uh, yeah. You went to where? Oh, what did you do down there? That's nice. That's good. Yeah, where'd you go? Did you? That's really nice for you. With your family? Yeah, that's nice. All right, my dears. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and give you, do you think 37 seconds is fair? Let's go ahead and do 37 seconds, and then in that 37 seconds, could you please turn with your pair of share partners and share this out on your marks, get set, go. <laughs> Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. My dears, and we are done. So if you can please finish your conversations, that would be great. So let's go ahead and look at what's happening at this. We have two plates. They're meeting. What do we think? Um, oh, and we know that there's a folded mountain range. So I'm going to draw a picture. I want you to draw this picture also. William, would you mind moving that just a little bit so we can see the picture I'm going to draw? Thank you. So normally, uh, according to the laws of original horizontality, we should have layers that go like this. Okay? So these are what our layers should look like. But I'm telling you that the layers have been folded. So please draw this picture. And now these layers are looking like this in what's now a folded mountain range. So what do you think happens in order to get flat horizontal layers to turn in to a folded mountain range? And this is what happens to the layers. 
turn with your pair share partners and talk that out. What kind of force is being applied to these layers? You got five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and we are done. What do you think? If these were a bunch of towels piled up on top of each other and I wanted to make them look like that, what would I have to do with those towels? I'd have to compress them. I'd have to push on them. So let's add some air. Yeah, let's add some arrows on this, right? What we have to do is we have to compress these layers like this and it makes them um, folded. Does anybody remember what kind of a boundary is that when we have things coming together? Nope, I'm not going to call it. Anybody who's got your hand up, put your hand down. Yes. This is convergent boundary. So please write this down. This is at a convergent boundary. This is where the plates are coming together. Notice the C, coming together at a convergent boundary. And so let's go ahead and say that the plates are moving to, how do you spell towards? Is it T, is it, there's an A here or is it towards each other? So originally, this is what layers should lay down like. It's the um, principles of original horizontality, saying that originally they should be horizontal. In order for them to start being folded like this, we have to have compression um, being applied to them. How's that sound? Pretty good? That looks like a good chocolate muffin. All right, so then what we are going to do today, it says students will be able to differentiate, that means tell the difference between divergent, convergent, and transform boundaries based on the varying motions of the plates, uh, tectonics or tectonic plates. For example, when we've got motion of plates moving towards each other, that is a convergent boundary. How are we gonna review that today? We're gonna go ahead and create model of different plate boundaries. What is going to be our medium that we are gonna use? We're gonna use graham crackers and we are gonna use frosting today in class. So that's what we're going to um, do today. I want to remind you that you have late essays that are still due and you've got people that are missing quizzes. I've got these lists um, for you up on uh, the board. Now I heard somebody say, can we eat this when we are finished? I am so sorry. I don't care if you eat them or not, but I'm going to tell you that some of them are going to get soggy. And so it might be kind of yucky at the end, but um, we'll wait until the end for that. So the first thing we need to do is we have to get our T-O-C, table of contents. If you can get that out, please, we are going to add, yeah, we are going to add to um, our table of contents and see where we're at. Really quick, I'm gonna look around to see who might be missing in my beautiful class. So if you could get out your T-O-C, that would be great for me. Last time we got together, I know that I was missing uh, some material. I think we had some notes that we did, is that right? And then we also had something else in there. My table of contents is not filled in um, fully. Can someone please help me because my pen was not working at the time. So after page 21, was it notes? It was 23, page 23? And were we taking notes on that day? On plate boundaries? Plate boundary notes? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, but it was like notes, I think, right? So I'm going to say, oops, not plant. Plate boundaries slash landforms. All right. So then is this page 25, Ron? Today is one slash nine, and this is, I'm just gonna say Graham Cracker Lab. Did I spell that wrong? Can we go right, no. Nope. Graham Cracker Lab. If you wanna go ahead and put the entire title on there, you go ahead and put the entire title on there. The title is Graham Cracker Plate Tectonics Lab. So I'm just writing down Graham Cracker Lab. 
When you have that written down, let's go ahead and make sure that our Graham Cracker Lab paper is in front of you. This is what it looks like. It says Graham Cracker Plate Tectonics, and there is a little picture up here, a map, and we can see all the different little cracks or plate tectonics um, in the world. So it looks like this. Get that out. You'll notice that we've got little boxes here. We are going to be, well, we as in you, are going to be drawing arrows in as far as the movement of the plates. These are going to represent your little Graham Crackers. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have you work in groups of two, which means that either you, Ebony, are going to need to move here or you are going to need to move down there. So choose. I choose wisely. Don't care what you choose. You know that? Like, my God. All right. You are going to get, each of you are going to get a plate, and you're going to get two graham crackers. Please do not currently eat them. Oh, and a um, little stick. So that is something else that you're going to do. What? The stick and a plate. Yeah. Do you want to do me a favor? Can you please make sure that everybody gets a stick? And can you please make sure that each group gets a plate? And then all I have to do is here, you take these and I'll put two graham crackers down here. So then I'll walk around with graham crackers, and you give everybody a plate. No, not um, just each each pair, bud. Each pair of people. Yeah. So if you see a plate, put a. Oh, are we moving into this area? Okay. So you're gonna get a plate. You're gonna get a couple of graham crackers for each. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm gonna follow you. I'm gonna follow the plate guy. Can I see me? And you're gonna get a popsicle stick. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Whoop! Wow, thanks. I just said that. And you ain't listening? Because I can't hear you put my leg over there. Right? Yeah, it looks like there's one grand crackers. No problem. Let me go ahead and get one of those for you. Everybody in here have many grand crackers, too? I didn't even get a donut. Yes. Sorry, I said Saturday because we had to go take it. And I ain't get one donut because Paul and Mike right. big stuff took them. And he tried to give it to me. I was like, nah, I have that because y'all touched it. It's bolts. <laughs> it's bolts. <All> right. <laughs> what are so, we going to do now? Me and crack it up. I need you to please make sure that those graham crackers are not in the middle of your plate because I need to go ahead and put a blob of frosting in the middle of your plate. So we're just gonna go ahead and leave that frosting alone just for a minute. So we'll just leave that frosting alone just for a second. Actually, you know what? I wanna go ahead and pull this up so that you can keep yourself busy with what you need to do to prepare. So here's what we're gonna do. We already went through our objectives. Students will be able to differentiate between divergent, convergent, transform boundaries based on the varying motion of tectonic plates. We're gonna have graham crackers and um, vanilla frosting. And so here's step one. You're not spreading out your frosting quite that much, but when I come around and give you a glop, just take your stick or your finger if you want, I don't care, and you're gonna go ahead and um, spread that frosting out a little bit. Not as much as we have up there, but go ahead and spread your frosting in so that it's just kind of a little area in there. So one of you take your finger or stick and spread that frosting out a little bit. So it's not a thin layer, it's kind of a thickish sort of layer. It's not a good She trying to do it perfectly. It's okay. We've got lots of different sinks in the area. You better lick it. There you go. Take your frosting. Does everybody have frosting? Looks great. There you go. It doesn't have to be a thin layer. It's just kind of a little thick layer. Definitely not as big as this. And we're good to go. That looks great. That looks great. What? 
Deep. That looks great. That's good. That looks good. All right, are we ready? Again, not a thin layer, right? Okay, here we go. Place two graham crackers side by side. What I want you to do is I want you to try to find the roughest parts of your graham crackers and make sure those graham crackers are pressed tight side by side on your plate. The roughest part of your graham crackers and put them side by side on your plate. Watch me. Rough side. Rough side. Okay. Place them side by side. Ready? Go. Throw it on. There you go. Looks good. Put it down. It's okay if the whole thing isn't covered with frosting then. Okay. Now, first things first. What does the icing represent? And with your pair share partners, talk about what the graham crackers represent. We're talking about plate tectonics, and this is a model. What is the uh, frosting modeling, and what is the graham cracker modeling? Ready, set, go. Try and talk that out. Represents. We call that the asthenosphere. Write that on your paper. Mantle, asthenosphere. If that's the asthenosphere, what's on top of the asthenosphere? The yeah, the crust. So these represent two tectonic plates. These are two tectonic plates. So just saying the crust. That's not enough now, right? Now we are learning to use our new knowledge and it's two tectonic plates of the crust. So I want you please to write that down. That's what the graham cracker represents. So we should now have questions one and questions two filled out. Yes? All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to follow the instructions on part three, I believe. Oh, wait, I'm going to tell you what to do. So this is step three. Slide one graham cracker up away from you and the other down towards you. At this point, make sure that those crackers are touching the entire time. They're jagged, and so you should have a hard time sliding them next to each other. You should have little bits that possibly break off from each other as they are sliding one away and one towards you, such as this. So one is moving in one direction, the other is moving in the other direction. And you should have little bits break off. Yep. And so as, as we have rock or crust that is trying to slide by itself, um, it catches and it drags and it snags and then as pressure builds up all of a sudden it starts slipping and you can see that parts um, are breaking off now it would be nice if it would just slide nice and smooth but it doesn't when it gets stuck and then all of a sudden it slips at once what do we call that that's an earthquake that happens and it happens because the um, crust is jagged all right so then notice on your picture, you've got two little boxes here. Please draw arrows showing what happens at this boundary. And then also, what kind of a plate boundary does this represent? And what type of natural disaster occurs? We already talked about that. With your peer share partners, I will give you 27 seconds to turn and share that. On your marks, get set, go. You're answering questions three and four and filling in the boxes. Oh shoot, I had a meeting today. Uh -oh. 
you're drawing in the arrow showing them. Notice that this right here is a little symbol for earthquakes and we can see that there are different earthquakes that happen along what's called the fault line. A fault is just a crack in a rock and so you will, if you pick up any rock off the ground and you see a crack in it, it's, it's called a fault um, or a, a crack. So fault lines and earthquakes. Do we have number three and four filled out on our paper? We're working on it. So we've got transform boundary right here that you would fill in. And then earthquakes. And, and typically earthquakes can happen at all of the boundaries. Anytime you've got land moving and sticking and catching, you're going to have um, earthquakes. So earthquakes can happen at all of them. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at what happened in the 1900s, early 1900s in uh, San Francisco, California. Has anybody ever been to San Francisco, California? Have you? Lovely. And so what you're going to do is you're going to see what happened back in, I think, like 1908 or something. And um, this is the area of California where there's lots of earthquakes because there is movement um, on a boundary. And I wish we had a picture of that. We don't, but that's okay. We'll watch this and we'll find a picture. In 1906, a massive earthquake and out of control fire devastated San Francisco. In 2017, now to our news hour share, something interesting that caught our eye. I want to talk about um, why the um, why the there was a fire, and there was a there was lots of fires because if the land is moving like this, and you've got pipes that are running through the land, and the land goes, what's going to happen to those pipes? They're going to burst. They're going to break. They're going to shear off. Okay. So if there's a pipe running, like if you can see the crack in the middle, and there's a pipe running this way, and part of the land moves up and part of the land moves down, those pipes are going to shear right off, and they're going to break. And then when there's a fire that breaks out, can you fight that fire with water? No, because the all the pipes broke. That's what happened here. I now to our news hour share something interesting that caught our eye in 1906 a massive earthquake and out of control fire devastated san francisco in 2017 a century old film turned up at a california flea market after seeing the discovery on facebook photo historian jason wright bought the film on a hunch that it might be long lost footage of a crippled san francisco shot two weeks after the quake we recently spoke to Wright from his home in High Burton, England, about the secrets revealed in the now restored film. In April 1906, a major earthquake struck San Francisco. The quake was very large in itself, but most of the, the damage was actually caused by fire, which ripped through the city. Whole sways of San Francisco were completely leveled and destroyed. We've known about this film for over a hundred years, but it's more of a rediscovery. It's uh, it's been lost all this time. What it actually is is about one to two weeks after the earthquake actually hit. It's uh, basically a trip down Market Street done by the Miles Brothers, and there's a famous uh, tape that most people have already seen, which went down Market Street um, just a couple days before the earthquake hit. The previous uh, footage of the trip down Market Street only survives because one of the Miles Brothers actually sent that footage over to their New York studio literally one day before the earthquake hit. This is a missing film of their trip back down Market Street once the earthquake had already happened. So it allows us to really compare and contrast 
basically before and after and see the devastation. So they're that showing you exactly the same up. area all after the, hustle, the, all the bustle that you saw the on the, 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 the previous uh, trip down Market Street. That's all kind of gone and that's people are quite kind of down the same place and after. kind of shuffling around, you know, all the pomp mm -hmm. and all the rich people going past in their, their expensive cars. That's completely gone now. As you move down Market Street, you see most of the buildings are gone at this point, and you see a lot of ancient steam uh, engines. They used to put chains around the buildings and pull the buildings down using the steam engine. As you get down towards the bottom of Market Street, though, you get to the ferry building, and this is the most important part of the film for me. You see the, the human cost of the actual tragedy. You see a lot of people basically in line, you know, from rich to poor, everybody, and they're waiting for ferries and boats to take them out of the disaster area. And then towards the end of the movie, it flicks through a few more scenes. You see dynamiting taking place, um, you know, City Hall being blown up, for example, which is disconcerting, and then the demolition of Prager's department store. I wanted to bring this to the people of San Francisco. I wanted to make sure that we conserved it for future generations because I think it's very important. With this film, you see the human element of, of what happened. Disaster strikes and everybody's lives are changed. And it just makes us realize, I think, how quickly things can go to pieces. But it also shows us how people can you know, dust themselves off and basically get back to life and rebuild again. You just can't keep down San Francisco. San Franciscans, they just keep on going. All right. So Remarkable. That's, that's that. I wanted to show you that. And that is, come on. Uh, that's this. Um, this fault line right here through California. And you can see San Francisco is right up here, right on the fault line. And so this is part of the Baja Peninsula comes down here and it is a transformed fault. So one uh, part of the land is going up. This part of the land keeps sliding up that way towards the Aleutian Islands. And so as it does that, this is just kind of slowly smearing itself past um, that area. But it gets caught and it gets stuck. And so pressure and tension builds up. And then when it slides, you know, you can get meters of movement all at once. And that energy just flows through the land. Also, what can happen is we can get um, tsunamis. Um, so that's another devastation. Anytime you are moving land by water and you can uh, force a tsunami, um, that's, that's what happens. You force the water up. And so we're going to watch just a few minutes. These are um, five biggest tsunamis caught on camera. This is a pretend picture. That is not really what happened. I'm not sure. <laughs> Shallower land, and so this 
this water just keeps getting higher. And so the water goes and then just kind of crashes over. It's like if you're a little kid in the bathtub and you put your hands over the water and you push up and the water bulges, that's what happens when the land uh, moves under the ocean. Just a huge, awful um, wave of water that comes through. And if you are ever at the ocean, and have you, if you, how many of you have ever been lucky enough to be at the ocean? Okay, you know low tide? Low tide is when the ocean goes out. High tide is when the ocean comes up. But at low tide, when it goes out, you can see a lot of the ocean floor by the, by the shoreline. In this case, in the 2004 um, tsunami, what happened was you, the ocean went out for like a half mile and it just kind of went out. And because of that, all of that water goes out because it's building the wave that's coming. And so if you've ever seen that, you know, and it goes way, way out, um, get to higher ground. All right, so step four, spread that icing out again, put the two graham crackers back together, and then we're gonna slowly begin to pull that apart. So spread your frosting out, so it's kind of like thick, um, thick kind of area. Put those two graham crackers on top of it, and then slowly push down and pull um, apart. So you've got frosting on a plate, such as this. You've got two graham crackers. Oh, you're, you're pulling them apart. Yeah, like apart, sorry. Yes, apart away from each other. So I've got my graham crackers, I'm pushing down and I'm pushing away. That's it, that's what I'm doing. So like this, questions five and six, what kind of plate boundary does this represent? And what landforms are created at these types of boundaries? So I'm gonna go ahead and put some time on the, I'm gonna go ahead and put 27 seconds in and your time starts now. Turn with your pair share partners, chalk that out. What kind of a plate boundary is that? With the, they're moving apart. <laughs> and what landforms would be created at these boundaries? All right. What kind of boundary is this where we're moving apart? Nope, you've already played in my game. Go. No. Yes, go. Oh, diverging boundary. Diverging boundary, that's right. And then what uh, what kind of landforms are created here? Does anybody know? Okay. Um, yeah, so what we can have, first of all, for answer number five, is divergent boundary. So if you could write down divergent or divergent boundary, you can see right here what is happening at a divergent boundary. Write that down on number five. Thanks very much, I also forgot. Can I touch this? Yeah. Don't forget to be filling in your little arrows in your boxes, okay, that represent your grams. Don't forget to do that. So we've got those little um, arrows to fill in. All right, and yes, we can have mid-ocean ridges are formed. And that's when we get ocean to ocean. So we're gonna write down two things here. One, mid-ocean ridges, and make sure that you know that's when there is a ocean and ocean. So two ocean plates moving apart. You can see from our little key down here, the little blasts are gonna be little earthquakes that can happen. Earthquakes can happen at all of the boundaries. And then you've got volcanic eruptions that are occurring. Because as you are moving plates apart, you're cracking the crust and magma has the opportunity to come up. So we've got mid-ocean ridge. What else can form other than a mid-ocean ridge? Oh, I want to show you this. This is a mid-ocean ridge um, that's happening here at Atlantic um, mid-ocean ridge. And this is Iceland. What do you think these little um, 
Yeah, those are all volcanoes, because as it's um, spreading apart, volcanoes can be in there through the uh, North American plate and the Eurasian plate. But there's also something that we call a rift valley. So please write that down also on that area, rift valley. And that's when we get a continent separating from a continent. So if a continent is splitting or ripping or rifting apart, what we have is something like this that happens. And that is happening right now uh, near Lake Mead. Has anybody ever been to Lake Mead, Nevada? Anybody ever been to Nevada? Me either, but I'd like to go um, and see it. And I've got a video here, a two minute video that I wanna go ahead and show you. Uh, I'm going to show that here. So divergent boundary, where continental plates move apart, rift valleys are formed. Here's a really great picture of a rift valley. I wanna make this bigger so that you can see it and then I'll show you that little video. Um, this valley has been separating probably for millions of years. You can see the crack right here in the middle is very sharp. It's jagged, that's because it's fresh. Um, but eventually, weathering and erosion will soften the sides just like it's done over on here um, as you know, wind and water and ice kind of goes through and breaks that down. I do have a little video that I want to show you. I was not able to link it, but I have found it. I'm just going to do this. There's a lake. It's beautiful. Lake Me, Nevada. Below this barren, unforgiving landscape, an earth-shattering event is underway. So this is right in our continent. North, North America, America is splitting apart. Geophysicist Marsha McNutt is struggling to understand what may be the creation of a new continent. When we try to understand the breakup of, say, Africa and South America, we don't have anyone who can come in and tell us exactly when, what fault moved, and how far it moved. That's all so old and so buried, and it happened so long ago, we'll never piece it together. The beauty about going to a place like this is it's all so fresh and preserved. The, the deformation that occurred here is in the geologic time scale, a blink of an eye away, and that's why this is such a wonderful spot to come and study this process. Lake Mead is the only large body of water lying over the fault line where the continent is splitting apart. To the west of Lake Mead, over the past 20 million years, the movement of the plate has been stretching the continent. The oh, clearest way to see this is to look at the normally horizontal deposits of sediment now tilted on these mountains. You see how they're kind of falling this way now? Pieces of and the Earth's way? crust toppled over like a row of dominoes. Think about like being stacked and as it's being pulled all the way to fall. the Pacific Ocean. The dominoes have toppled almost all the way over. And that's the first one of these big rotated domino blocks before we get to the flatline plateau strata. And that flat, those flat strata just go for hundreds of miles in that direction, and deformed rocks go for hundreds of miles in that direction. So this is really a big transition right here, and, and it's really sharp, too. So these blocks right this here is a place where are supposed a to be this is falling way. apart before and they're our very not. eyes. They're being pulled apart. All right, I just wanted to show you that. A little Rift Valley in the process. Thank you. No, thank you. All right, now spread out the icing again. Push the two graham crackers towards each other and make one slide under the other, like this. Get your head off the desk, man. I know. It's going to be great. So now go ahead and we are, right, we've got that frosting in the middle again. Now what we're doing is we're having the frosting come together and one is going to duck under the other. One's going to duck under the other, just like this. Seven and eight, with your pair shirt partners, if you please, what type of boundary does this represent and what forms when one plate slides under the other? On your marks, get set, go. Chop that out. Five, four, three, two, one, and we are done. What do we 
think? What kind of a boundary is this when they're coming together? William, when they're coming together, what kind of a boundary is that? Convergent, convergent boundary, that's right. So what we've got here is we've got a convergent um, boundary, and that's how you spell it if you are not sure. That's number seven. And you can see the picture um, there in the, on the screen. And here's what um, happens at those boundaries. You can get a uh, deep ocean trench. So write down that you can get trenches when you get oceanic and oceanic coming together. So at oceanic, oceanic, you get trenches. And it's always the more dense plate that will dive beneath the less dense plate. And when that happens, what also can form is an island arc. Okay, so when ocean comes together with ocean, you get an island arc. One is subducting. You're going to have to know that for our exam. So if you want to think about this one ducking under the other, um, you can think about it like that. So you're writing down trench and island arc, and that happens when we get an oceanic plate coming together with an oceanic plate. <clears throat> now... You can also get something, oh, well, I'm gonna show you pictures of that. So an example of that would be um, the Marianas Trench. That is a trench right here. Challenger Deep is the deepest part of the Mariana Trench. Um, Guam is located right there. And what I did was I found some pictures of uh, right here, these little islands. These are Mariana Islands. And here's a, a close-up picture. These are created because as this is diving beneath this, it's then um, you know, popping up, melting down there and coming up through the cracks, making those islands. I'm gonna show you a little video that I found. Real As I'm in the midst that. of applying for residency right now, wish me luck, Grammarly has again been a lifesaver with my application. 150 kilometer long, 69 kilometer wide fracture that plummets down into a pure black void. At the bottom, it hosts the deepest known location on Earth, the Challenger Deep, 11,033 meters or 36,200 feet beneath the waves. The trench itself is but one part of a global network of deep scars that cut across the ocean floor. Features that formed from a process called subduction in the case of the Mariana Trench, the western edge of the Pacific Plate was thrust beneath the smaller Mariana Plate to the west, creating the deep fracture. Molten material then rose through volcanoes near the trench, building the nearby Mariana Islands. So I just wanted to show you that really quick. <clears throat> Um, also, this is how the islands of Japan were formed, and so you've got uh, the Mariana Trench through here, and there's the um, islands, and also uh, the Aleutian Islands are formed that way. You've got a deep trench down through here, where the Pacific Ocean is diving underneath the Bering Sea, and you've got these line of um, island volcanoes that are being formed. All right. So what happens if a continental and an oceanic um, crust uh, collide? So if we have continent and oceanic, we get volcanic mountain ranges. And this happens like the um, Andes Mountains on the side. So if you have oceanic and continental come together, you get volcanic mountain ranges. If that's something that you want to write down, I would do that. Maybe like O with C, oceanic with continental you're going to get, again, it's like a volcanic mountain range, but this time it doesn't form islands because it's on the continent, it's not underwater. So you're gonna get that volcanic mountain range. And then, um, here's what we're gonna do next. Pick up one of your graham crackers, wipe it off with your paper towel. I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna spray water on a edge of your graham cracker. We're gonna let this water soak in. So let that water soak in, please, to one of the edges of your graham cracker. And we're going to do then our last um, part. Yep. So we're going to go ahead and do the last part. I'm going to just put some water on the edge to soften that up. Just 
just one. I'm just going to put it on one. Don't worry about it. I'm good here. I'm just going to wet down um, a part. Yeah, you're fine. Continental plates collide. So this is question 10. Folded mountains at a convergent boundary. When it's a continent and a continent. So if they are the same density, no change in density, neither is going to be able to subduct because the density is the same, and so you get a folded mountain range. Um, I need you to start the cleanup process. Um, if you want to eat them, do or throw it in the trash. This is how our Himalayan mountains were created. As India came closer to Asia, because that's a land mass and a land mass, they just kind of came and folded up in between. Ooh. Is this third hour or fourth hour? Make sure that my plate gets thrown in the trash. Brilliant. Can you shut that off? 